Good evening, friends. We are jumping right into this video, busting out our amazing resin, my new best friend. If you are on a time crunch, you have to try this stuff. So we're going to mix equal parts, part A and part B, into our silicone cup. You just mix it for 40 seconds to get it activated, and then you're going to start pouring it in your molds. Today, I'm going to have like a little plethora of molds here. I have one that is actually not IOD. It's the Prima Redesigns, this little bunny one, which is Gorga, and I am going to start pouring these in. Now, <laughs> I was being very, very careful because if you saw my Facebook live, um, yeah, that was a hot mess with this stuff. So I am going slowly, but kind of fast because I don't want it to cure up. But I had the other two molds, those are just there because I don't like to waste resin. So I just start filling in different molds, let them dry, and then they'll be there when I need them in the future. So we're only using the rabbit mold today. Now I'm taking these blocks. I got them at Savers. It was like in one of their clear bags for $5.99 and it was the like primitive believe blocks. We're only gonna use three. We're gonna use my new favorite creamy color crinoline from DIY. And I am going to give all of this one um, a coat of paint and then I'm gonna double up on the front of this. We're gonna do the same color for all three of the boxes that we use in today's video. And after that, we are going to pop out some of our molds. Look at you guys. <gasps> that little bunny head is so cute. So we are going to attach this using the Gorilla Super Glue. Let me just tell you, less is more with this super glue, okay? Because it definitely spreads once you apply it down on your surface. I wish I had more patience for it, but I don't. So that's why I put a little bit of hot glue on there. And then I'm going to paint the entire box, including the, the rabbit as well, with our crinoline. And you guys... I am trying all different adhesives. You're going to see me use all different ones in all videos. I'm just trying to find like my perfect ones when using the molds just to ensure that they stay on. Now I'm going to grab some of the decoupage paper. Y'all, I can't believe this stuff is $9. Look, check this out. Look at look at this. There are so many images. Again, I've been getting mine from Sonic's, sonicsgardenandbloom.com. Her link's in the description box. I'm gonna go with this little gem right here because it goes more with the vibe we're going for. And I am going to adhere that to the front. So I am getting DIY liquid patina and I'm gonna do a light coat underneath. You could also do the Mod Podge hack with the iron as well. And then with whatever is remaining on my brush, I'm gonna go ahead and smooth that on down. <sighs> These just make me, they make me so happy just how you can take a piece of decoupage paper and completely turn something into magical decorness. Okay, that's a new word. If you guys didn't know, write it down. All right, now I'm gonna take these stamps from IOD and this is like a chippy paint stamp. And I believe Vonda from Painted Heirloom still has them in her stash. It comes with these like chippy wood one, a scratchy little finish, and then like a crackle. And there's another one as well. But we are gonna focus on the chippy paint one. And I am taking stone gray and I am just putting that in random spots all over our boxes. I'm also going to take the crackly looking stamp and I am going to put that over our first stamp. So you'll see right here. And it just adds so much depth to this piece and gives it that vintage touch that I am looking for. Now, you guys, when I say that super glue, the Gorilla Glue, I put super glue on this and way overdid it. And it was coming out the sides. I had to literally take this off, get goo gone, take that off, and then like clean the block and then go for it. So you're welcome for that story. I might have wasted like 10 seconds of your life. I'm sorry. Now we are taking clear wax by DIY and I am going to completely clear these. Remember, if you are clearing with wax, that is your last step. You don't even have to put polyacrylic on it or spray it or nothing. You are clearing it by putting that wax on. All right, 
Now taking our gray wax, this is in my Amazon store link for y'all, and just a Dollar Tree stencil brush. I am putting that all over our mold, wiping away the excess, and then I'm buffing the wax that's around it. I also decided to get a light coat and put it around the rest of the box just to kind of darken it up a little bit more. And of course, we are definitely putting it on this rabbit head. I really liked this mold, you guys. It worked very well. I had no issues with it at all, so I highly recommend it. And it will be in the Amazon store link for you as well, because that's where I got mine. All right, you guys, this is how it turned out. I absolutely love it. And it just makes me so excited how you can take somebody's past home decor that might not be in trend anymore and completely flip it and revitalize it and make it gorgeous once again these stamps set it off the molds are gorgeous and that decoupage paper just adds that little something we needed in the middle block so let me know down in the comment if you like it with a rabbit emoji all right for this second one, these are wood blanks from Dollar Tree, so don't count Dollar Tree out. Their wood blanks are awesome. I am going to paint the entire thing with white by Waverly. I'm not using DIY paints just because this is all going to be covered up anyway. So I was like, I ain't using the expensive stuff. We're going to use the Waverly, the Waverly. And this is the second piece I'm going to use as well. So I wanted two different shapes. Now that it's done, I'm going to take Mod Podge and I am going to evenly coat that. So right here, you guys, um, I'm putting it on thick, but I, I don't want to say thick because some of you I know are going to go a little overboard when I say that. I'm putting a healthy coat on, okay? Um, a healthy coat that's not too thick. <laughs> So don't go overboard. Now I'm taking my um, heat gun on cool setting and I am going to dry this up. I, I don't have any time to wait, so I use that. Now I'm taking my image I designed, this is on my website, and I printed it on to this striped tissue paper from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna put parchment paper over that and I am taking my little mini Cricut press and I am putting some pressure on. And for me, I was able to know it was working because you could kind of smell the Mod Podge again, almost like it was wet. And this took me no time at all. And y'all, you do not have to buy a mini press for this. Go to Walmart, they have many little irons and they're like $15. We are gonna do the same thing for this second one. It is so cute. It says Lazy Days Rabbit Farm and this little bunny just like laying there chilling. Uh, I loved it. So doing the same thing, it is attached. It is not going anywhere. I am going to get my little finger sander and we are going to sand around the edges, but we are going in downward motion so that we do not rip any of the tissue paper that is on top of our wood block. Now taking now, do I say now a lot? <clears throat> Put a happy face emoji if I'm always saying now. DIY clear wax. I coated it first with that. Then I am taking the DIY dark wax and I'm gonna coat the entire thing. If you guys are like, okay, why are you putting clear wax before you put the other wax? I do that for movability. I want more movement with this dark wax. I want to be able to wipe a lot of it away, like buff it out. And if I were to put that dark wax on it directly, I would not have that flexibility with the, um, the wax. So then I put it around the edges and it's just not showing up enough for me. So what I do is take that alchemy wax I've been getting from Vonda at Painted Heirloom and I'm taking, is it Sapia? Sapia, you guys know, you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. And I coat the edges with that and it just gives me that little bit of depth around the frame that I was looking for but couldn't achieve with the dark wax. I kept the backs raw because there was nothing wrong with raw wood on the back. And I repeat this step for the second one. And all I'm doing is taking Dollar Tree stencil brush and I'm stippling it in and then patting away any excess of it. 
I take Dollar Tree ribbon in this beautiful creamy color, tie some knots, and then staple them down so somebody has the option to hang these if they want. And these came out so fun and beautiful. I definitely think that they would be, that, I mean, I guess they could fit in any decor. I'm calling it this stuff vintage farmhouse, okay? <laughs> and Cottontail Training Trading Co. Family owned. I am loving the striped um, tissue paper that I printed these on. I feel like it adds so much to these images and they are on my website. Link is down in the description box. Hey everyone, just checking in. I hope you guys are enjoying these kind of farmhouse vintage DIYs. I wanted to remind you guys, if you're digging me, if you're digging the channel, if you're digging the DIYs, then make sure to like and make sure to leave me a comment. It's an absolutely free way you can help your girl out here on YouTube. All of my links are down in the description box, including my website where you can purchase today's images. And I've been selling all of the DIYs I've been doing as well since I am not decorating in this house. I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the video and y'all know that I will be back on Thursday for our thrift haul and then Saturday again with another DIY. Have an amazing week, you guys. Let's get back into it. Last but not least, of course I wasn't recording this, but good thing you guys know how to paint a sign. Um, I There was a mushroom image on this prior. So I painted it first with gray so that I knew I would get good coverage over my image and not have to do like four coats of crinoline. And once that gray dried down, then I did the crinoline. Now I'm taking, of course we had to use this bunny mold. I am taking my mold and I am painting them before I put them on my sign. And I know usually I glue them down and then paint on top of it. However, I wanted to put some of the, what do you, what do we call them? You guys, green sack stripes is green sack stripes. I think it is, um, on the sign first. So you'll see right here, I made this stencil all by myself, you guys, for a Facebook Live, and I was so proud of myself. Um, for all of my membership people, um, I will be coming out in the next week with a video on how to create your own stencils on your Cricut. So right here, I'm taking Skeleton Key, and I am taking my stencil brush from Dollar Tree. I want to note that I went way too heavy on the paint. Less is more when stenciling. And when I peeled this up, I do kind of um, dry it down a little on a cool setting. There were so many bleeds. And I was like, uh, that didn't happen the first time I used it. So on the opposite side, I go in light and there we go. That was the problem. I just went way too heavy with my paint on that left side because I'll show you right now. I pull this up and it's so clean. But then I was like, well, we can't have a clean side and then a messy side. So then I kind of went a little heavier to try and get some bleeds, but it, yeah, it kind of worked. All right, so do you see that, you guys? The right and the left side going lighter, less. <laughs> Who says that? Not me because I am extra. Okay, so now I'm going to take the super glue. Now, you guys, this Gorilla super glue is not the gel kind or anything. And if you mix any of that hot glue on any of that super glue, it totally deactivates it and does not work. So, this is me again trying all different mediums. I, I guess for me, it's because I am always on a time crunch and I'm really trying to give you guys the best DIYs that I can in the time I'm allotted, which is when Montgomery is sleeping for an hour and a half. So, um, the star bond was great because it dried so quickly, but I'm finding with bigger projects, um, I feel like sometimes they come apart. So, Give me all of your recommendations and comments. Now, you guys, I coated it, of course, with clear wax. Now I'm taking that dark wax. You see right here? That was the super glue and the hot glue mixed, and then it like came up. So now I'm taking that dark wax and I'm focusing on my molds first. And then I'm going to get a light coat and I'm going to put it on the rest of the sign. I wanted this sign dark and vintage and dingy, and I was totally vibing with that look. So now I'm going to get a paper towel. You can also get a cloth and I'm going to buff out 
the molds and then around the molds as well. It gives it like a, uh, when you buff it out, like a cloudy, cloudy look, an airy look. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about, but you guys are seeing it visually <laughs> come to life. So I just work around the bunny or the rabbit. Is there a difference between a bunny and a rabbit? I should Google that. And you guys, this turned out so good. Again, I didn't put any kind of hook on the back of this because seasonal decor command strips all the way for me. And this is how it turned out. And as I'm coming up to it, you guys, my light is so bright, it's brightening it up, but it's a lot darker and like more brown than it's showing on here. But I think the stripes in the background just add so much more detail to it. I mean, how much more detail can you get than these molds? But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I appreciate you guys choosing to click on my video and spend your time watching my content. Um, I appreciate y'all so very much and I cannot wait to show you the thrift haul this Thursday. Have a good one. Bye. My, my eyebrows. The lighting in the bathroom is so bad. It looks so wishy. I probably have a bunch of stuff in my teeth. Just don't look. Oh gosh, there's a fireplace there. Okay. <laughs> ah! Not that. Why? Why? It's like all the ones that are sticking up there, this, the tinsel. Get, get away. Mm, okay. <laughs> Help me, Tom Cruise. <laughs> okay, I gotta go by.